Today's Dallas Cowboys report is made possible by LinkedIn Talent Solutions. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier on you to find the right person for your job. You can post it for free at linkedin.com slash NFL Daily. More on them later on in today's show, but it is fairly jam-packed. First up on today's long show, we'll break down if the Cowboys should, will, and or need to start Tyler Smith at left guard. Jerry Jones made some public comments on Antonio Brown. We'll break down the future of Nashawn Wright. Is he going to make this team? The Jalen Tolbert, I'll call them issues for now, and the idea out there of trading for a swing tackle. All coming up on today's show. We begin with the first one. That is starting Tyler Smith at left guard. Is it time to make the move officially, publicly? Absolutely, it is four stars. As I'm sure everyone watching knows, you made Tyler Smith a first-round draft pick. In the, in the first round, you take someone there to start them in almost all cases. He's gotten the starts in all of the preseason games so far, the first two. He has not gotten all of the first-team reps at left guard. The Cowboys have chosen to rotate in Connor McGovern slash even start McGovern in some of the joint practices. They've, they've been rotating both guys in there. Through two preseason games, a bunch of camp practices, joint practices, it's time to make the move officially. I'm not trying to body Connor McGovern. Tyler Smith is better. His preseason production from PFF, I will make note, I, I went back and studied all the snaps from Tyler Smith. That PFF run grade is way too low. That's where he's flashing of his best power. I think they dinged him incorrectly for a couple plays, maybe in one of the penalties that was not a penalty. Three so far, that is a red flag, but he's held up well in pass protection of your offensive lineman who's played both games. So that's Smith, McGovern, and the backups. I would say that Smith's been your most impressive. You made him a first-round pick. I know you are a bit worried about maybe some potential missed assignments. I know that was a concern raised um, by Nate Newton, but outside of maybe one in the last preseason game, he's always seemed to have been in the right spot. And I don't mind McGovern. He's a nice player for you. He should be your backup right guard. Still don't know why he's never gotten a chance to win that center job, but it is very clear to me that Tyler Smith needs to be this team's starting left guard. Look, he is going to make mistakes. He will have growing pains. They will, there will be flags. There will be moments his technique falters. There will be, you know, pressures allowed, gets beats on the run plays, and that's okay. No offensive lineman bats a 1,000%. We need to have those expectations adjusted correctly. Frankly, there will probably be several times per game that Smith makes a mistake, and that's okay. The moment you made him your round one pick, he needed to be your week one starter at left guard. Otherwise, there's something really, really wrong somewhere along the offensive line. You take some of the ups and downs because he's 21 years old with immense upside. You get him on the field and let him work through any potential issues he has because he's still better than Connor McGovern. But what do you think? That's my opinion, of course. I want to hear from you guys. Should Tyler Smith start week one at left guard? Y for yes or N for no. This is the pinned comment on today's show. If the ad break comes here on YouTube, you know the drill. Head down there, type in Y or N. Let's talk Antonio Brown now. Brown said he wants to play for the Cowboys. He says, tell Jerry Jones to call me, right? Well, Jerry Jones spoke with TMZ and said, how about no? Which, for the record, is the correct decision because it's Antonio Brown. And to be blunt, he's... A head case. Here's exactly what Jerry Jones had to say. We're good. We want to give these young guys a real chance to make the team. That means Jalen Tolbert. That means Dennis Houston, Simi Fioko, TJ Vasher, Kevante Turpin. Probably kind of it from that perspective. But those are the guys the Cowboys want to have on the 53-man roster. Making a move to sign Antonio Brown is like hiring the wrong person. And LinkedIn Talent Solutions help make sure you hire the right one. As you gear up for fall, you need the right people on your team to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network and help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs 
Number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find candidates you want to talk to faster. Did, did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL Daily. That's linkedin.com slash NFL Daily to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. That link, by the way, it's linkedin.com slash NFL Daily, is in the comment section and in the description of today's show. So if you're trying to hire someone for your small business, post it for free at linkedin.com slash NFL Daily. Back now to some rumors on the Dallas Cowboys. How about Nashawn Wright? Is he going to get cut or not? I'll put this at two stars. I, I, I go back and forth in terms of what I think the Cowboys end up doing. There are a couple of those last roster spots, seven to eight, or excuse me, seven to eight players fighting for maybe two or three spots on both sides of the line combined. Wright had a, allegedly a very good training camp. That has not carried over to the preseason. The Cowboys have six corners fighting for a spot, maybe seven if we include C.J. Goodwin, which would be kind of a hybrid role there for you in terms of mainly a core special teamer. And Wright's pretty valuable on special teams, and that might be the reason why he makes it. If, if Wright was not a core special teamer last year, I don't think he would make it. But because he is, he is still fighting despite a very rough preseason. Targeted nine times, allowed eight completions, 159 yards, a touchdown, has one pass breakup. Also, though, by the way, has been flagged three times for penalties, one of which took away an interception. The Cowboys are fairly deep at corner. Diggs, Brown, Lewis, then Joseph Wright, Deron Bland. Goodwin is the core special teamer. I wonder if the presence of Wright's special team's value means maybe you make him cornerback six and he replaces Goodwin as your main gunner on the outside possibility we'll see if it actually ends up happening though so what's your honest thoughts here do you want Nishan Wright to make the 53-man roster for the Dallas Cowboys type in M for you want him to make it or type in C for you'd rather cut him let's talk Jalen Tolbert now has he been underwhelming so far the answer is yeah it's it's four stars um that's the reality of the situation for the Cowboys, and it's not always been the best opportunity, especially in the preseason, but Tolbert has not been that great. He's been okay-ish, fine-ish, and he's had chances, but he's been really inconsistent overall for this Cowboys team, and that should be a pretty big red flag in terms of the instant impact. I'm not worried about him long-term, and I'm not panicking either, but the Cowboys are banking on Tolbert making a pretty big role a pretty big impact early on in a sizable role with all the injuries. And so far in the preseason, 10 targets, only four catches. There was a drop mixed in there. He should have caught the play you see on screen, that touchdown. Got to drag that foot. Got to be aware of where you are in the back. That was actually a good throw by Cooper Rush. Tolbert's got to make that touchdown. I think we're talking very differently if Tolbert makes that catch. I really do. Instead, you know, he misses it and the Cowboys are thin at receiver. We know CeeDee Lamb's going to be wide receiver one on the outside all year long. Gallup will not play week one per himself. Noah Brown is probably going to play a big role early on. I think it'll be better with Dak throwing to Tolbert, but he's also getting backup corners. I would have appreciated a little bit more production, and it's not just been bad throws. He's had some mistakes as well. So over or under 507.5 receiving yards in year one for Jalen Tolbert. Type in O for over, or you can type in U for under. Sound off for me in the comment section. Let's talk trade now. How about trading for a swing tackle? I love the idea in principle. In reality, in practicality, I'm only going to give it the one star. I'm down to make some calls. We just saw Cody Ford, a, a basically a backup guard, go for a fifth rounder earlier today from, Air, from Buffalo to Arizona. The Cowboys offensive line, tackle depth. It's not great. Josh Ball has been, uh, it's about, uh, you know, Tolbert being underwhelming, Deshaun Wright being bad. Ball's also been pretty bad. Matt Walesko is going to miss time. Avion Collins is not a great player. Maybe Isaac Allercone can fill that role for you. Dallas not getting much chance with one, with the one, so I don't trust him there. Blogging the boys said, you should consider trading away one of your defense linemen. I think that does make some sense. They had five names on their list. Terrell Basham, Carlos Watkins, 
Dante Fowler, Chauncey Golston, and Tristan Hill. I don't know if they trade away Golston so quickly. I think Hill could be available. Basham, Watkins, probably not Fowler either. Here's the issue you run into, folks. Finding offensive line help, especially via the trade market, is really hard. And that's because there is a severe lack of depth in the NFL. You guys remember Chaz Green, bad man Chaz Green? He is still playing in the NFL all these years later. He's still getting chances to make roster. And that's despite him being a disaster. So finding a team with extra offensive line depth is very rare because in most cases, they got to keep that offensive line depth for themselves. That's why finding a swing tackle can be tricky and why you trade for Parker Ehringer. Give up Trevarius Ward, and it's one of your all-time worst trades, if we're being honest, that don't include one first-round picks for receivers and whatnot. So five names we could at least consider. I'll go quick on them. Tevin Jenkins. I think he might start at guard for the Bears now. We'll see. I, I think he's a right tackle only, so swing value I don't love, but he did get some left tackle reps last, last year. Chuma Doga could be cut by the Jets. He's been a third-round pick, but pretty disappointing. Max Sharping has some tackle guard flexibility, but back up in, 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 uh, in Houston. Cowboys legend Cam Irving on this list. He might not make the team in Carolina. Could be a decent option if the money can be worked out a little bit better. Walker Little, also a, a former second-round pick. He or Jawan Taylor, one of them, will not be starting. Little intrigues me the most. Also probably the most expensive in the event he doesn't win the right tackle job somehow for Jacksonville. Easier route might be free agency, by the way. Just sign Eric Fisher if you if the money is right, of course, because that's always an issue, right? What's also been an issue for years now, especially the past two years, is penalties for the Cowboys. They are the penalty boys, but bullying works. So we're going to bully the Cowboys, respectfully, kind of, sort of, into making some changes. Bully the Cowboys into fewer flags by typing in flags in the comment section. 